Hello, my name is Dan David. Welcome to the Muddy Waters YouTube channel. I'm here with Carson Block, CIO of Muddy Waters Capital, to discuss MW's latest short idea. And it's a big short call. So with that, I'll turn it over to Carson to give us a high level overview of his idea and then we can get into some of the details. Carson? Thanks, Dan. So this is a big short call and we are short anti-sports. The reason we're short anti-sports is we've done a lot of investigation and we believe that its financials are unreliable or should not be relied upon. In other words, that it's committing fraud. Uh, what we have, we've titled this report, and it sounds pretty tongue in cheek, but I'll explain it. We've titled this report, Turds in the Punch Bowl. <laughs> and the reason for that is we're not talking about Anta in terms of its operations, which it looks like it's, it, it's a solid company in terms of operations. In terms of marketing, it's made a lot of strides. And they even have NBA players under contract. But from a financial perspective, the financials are not reliable. And that is because Anta has, it secretly controls a number of its tier one distributors. So we think that 70 to 80% of the core brand sales actually go to these secretly controlled distributors. And that the reason Anta does this is to boost its margins and report more profits and possibly more sales than it actually generates. Therefore, it is committing fraud in our view. Fraud? Yes. Okay. So Anta, HK2020 is a ticker symbol. It's the biggest sports distri sportswear distributor in China. Not a small company. We're talking about 20 billion market cap US. Yes. Right? Uh, so it is a big call as you say it is. And it, it occurs to me that you're not the first one to have this idea. There have been at least two other short calls on Anta in the last year, one this year. So two questions. One, have to ask, are you affiliated in any way with any of these other shops that have had a short call on Anta? Have you shared research? Have you spoken to them? Um, any kind of affiliation? Uh, and two, how is your research any different? Sure. So first of all, we have no affiliation whatsoever with Blue Orca or GMT. Uh, I've seen Blue Orca's slides that Soren presented at Sone about a month ago. And in terms of what's different, what they found, they found anomalies, uh, financial anomalies. But they didn't have, and this is no disrespect to either Soren or, or GMT, mm. they didn't have the smoking guns. Mm. We have the smoking guns. We have concretely, irrefutably established that Anta secretly controls most of its tier one distributors. Okay. So just to be clear, there's no financial uh, kind of relationship between you, GMT, uh, Blue Orca, uh, on any of this research. That's correct. I mean, and, I, I might have bought Soren a dinner once or twice, but right. well, by the same token. Gotcha. I, yes. <laughs> but by the same token, I also think we should take this opportunity to point out, it's well known that you and I are friends. We also have a, a business relationship. However, just to make clear, you've come out here to San Francisco to interview me right. as a favor. Um, I'm paying your airfare. You're not even getting a fee to sit here and you have no economics whatsoever in the short. So uh, if and when really? I get if and when I get sued, you should not be sued for this. Well, I'm all for that. But let's just I, I have no I have I'm all for not getting. sued. OK, all right. but I have no economics in this short. Correct. Oh, so I'm not going to make any money. Right. I mean, are you asking or are you telling me? Well, I mean, I'm just like I'm trying to get aware here. I'm not making right. any money in this trade at all the questions are going to get objectively harder at this point, right. just so you know. And we have not, you have not given me the questions beforehand. So right, yes. right, right. Yeah. Well, if I'm not going to make any money, this is going to be hard for you, All just right. so you know. Um, so how's anti committing fraud? You, you're using the big word fraud. Uh, it matters. It matters to the market. It should matter to the shareholders. It should matter to all of us. Tell us, how is anti committing fraud? Sure. So these distributors, these tier one distributors, they buy product from anti. Now, anti says that it has no control over these distributors. These distributors are independent arm's length parties, but in fact, they are not arm's length parties. 
So Anta, the, the, and we, what we did was we talked, first of all, we have significant paper trails here. There are a lot of records within SAIC files, some within WHO checks, some media, but a lot is in SAIC filings that establish these links. But in addition to that, we've spoken with several former senior executives of ANTA, as well as a former senior executive of one of the largest tier one distributors. And the way that it's been described as the, it's a left hand, right hand relationship for the chairman. So on the left hand is the public company, the Listco, ANTA, and on the right hand are the distributors. And the way that the control actually works, so most of the distributors, they have free reign in terms of how they're going to run the day-to-day -day operations. But what matters for the list co are the, is the financial reporting. So ANTA actually controls, within the distributors, it controls the finance departments and HR. So wow. it controls hiring and, the, and actually what we understand is that people who work in the finance departments at the distributors, they're actually paid, not by the distributors, but either by ANTA or this company that is a private company that's outside of the LISCO called Yundong. So you're basically saying that ANTA has command and control over most of its distributors. And it's ostensibly pushing costs off of their books onto their distributors. So if it's controlling these distributors and pushing costs onto distributors that they control, I guess investors might wonder if they control them, those costs, they're still absorbing those costs. If on a non-consolidated basis, they're still absorbing those costs. So why does it matter to the market if they're still absorbing the losses in some way or fashion? How does that fraud affect the market? Well, they're only absorbing the losses in terms of in paper, Yeah. right? I mean, there's, there's cash that has to actually move when there are, and we don't know that, I mean, it might not be accurate to say absorbing losses, but what we see happening is that ANTA is pushing expenses off of its own P&L and onto the P&Ls of the distributors. So this matters because people have looked at ANTA and said, okay, great, well, very good gross margin outperformance relative to its Chinese comps, great operating margin outperformance relative to its Chinese comps. These guys really know how to operate. I want to own this business. I'll pay a premium for it because they're such good operators. But they're not. That's a lie. Those margins are not to be trusted. So that's why it matters to investors. I mean, what's ANTA really worth? Well, what are the real financials? I can tell you with a high degree of certainty that the real financials are not what the company is reporting. Right. So if the real financials are something less than what they're reporting, this affects what? Their ability to uh, get financing in, in the market? This affects their ability to grow? How does it affect their ability in the marketplace? Well, committing fraud, if they're overstating, well, they, they're overstating profits, they're overstating their margins, it makes them more attractive. So that's one of the big side costs or uh, of, of fraud. And you've done obviously a lot of work exposing yeah. frauds, particularly in China as well. And when you have, so it's one thing if we take a company that's completely fraudulent, but if we take a business like an ANTA, yeah. that's a real business, but that has fraudulent financials and is raising money on the back of that, including fairly recently, they got Chip Wilson, the founder of Lululemon, they got him to put money into it, you know, because this guy knows sportswear operations, I'm gonna posit that he doesn't understand the financial due diligence one has to do in China, but they compete for capital with the other guys who are operating legitimately. And so when they report these, these numbers and they take in capital at the expense of their competitors who are playing it straight or much, you know, much closer to straight, that hurts the competitors unfairly. And that's a big problem that I think China, China needs to address is to stop, you know, to, to stop rewarding these people who are cheating uh, because you and I in our, in our business, we see that all too often. Right, we do, we do. So you talk to many former employees 
uh, from what I read in your report. Uh, former employees at you know a senior level, former employees in at a distributor level, I guess they're calling themselves employees even though they were distributors, subsidiaries I guess is the term. And it seems like they describe in your report that I've seen, what they describe to you is fraud. Mm -hmm. Do these employees, these former employees and distributors that you're speaking to know that they're describing fraud at their former employer? So the answer to your question is yes. Now, they say that it, the, or they've all said, um, with one exception of somebody who was, he didn't deny any of this, he was just on the sourcing side, so he didn't have visibility into the side of, into the distribution side of the business. What the people with whom we've spoken, who've had visibility into the distribution side of the business at, at a senior level have said, is that these companies, these distributors are referred to at the parent company, at Anta, as uh, as subsidiaries. So in Chinese, that's fun gong si or zi gong si. That's commonly yeah. how people refer to them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that that's that it. So it's it's not it's not a secret, and at least within the within the top levels, and they understand. I mean, they told us um, that they that the reason that the chairman does this is to make the financials better. Now they don't know by how much, and I want to make clear. In one, one call that we had, the, the person was purely speculating. He said, uh, in, in, one of the more, in one of the somewhat recent years, I don't recall which year, he said, Anta reported 5 or 6% same-store sales growth, but I, I really think that the real same-store sales growth was, was flat, maybe no more than 1%. Now, he didn't have, he made clear that he didn't have access to the actual numbers um, but this was his feeling based on his understanding of how the stores were doing. So again, I want to make clear that that's one person's speculation, but to your, to your question, yes, they're aware of this. Now, the people with whom we spoke, their responsibility is to operate the business. So I don't, I don't think that they view themselves as participants in a criminal enterprise. They have a job to do, and it's actually not committing fraud, but their jobs give them a window into what is actually happening here. And yes, they are by and large aware that this is being done or they understand it's being done to pretty up the financials. And they knew it was wrong. They knew what their chairman was doing is wrong or that what management was doing was wrong. Well, they never, look, in the conversations we had with them, and they never passed judgment. Right. I mean, they said things like there's water in the financials. Um, they said things like there's water in the financials, yes. which is but, kind of a... But that's not, it's not a, uh, an expression of opprobrium. It's just yeah. a statement of fact. Right. So moving on and talking about the, the name that comes up over and over again in your report is Yundong. And that seems to be the company that controls these subsidiaries. Can you tell us more about Yundong and how that works? Sure. So, so what, what just about every one of these former employees with whom we spoke said was that the actual, the actual entity that was exercising control on behalf of the chairman or on behalf of the public company, they were blending the two together in their mind, yeah. is called Yundong or Jinjiang Yundong. And so they, they referred to it as the chairman's company. Now, when we had when we had most of these conversations, we had so for the first conversation we had with a former, that's when Yundong first came up, and we hadn't heard of it. But afterwards, we looked it up, and we actually see that Chairman Ding does not own any of Yundong. So we asked the formers with whom we spoke after they brought up Yundong, we and they said it's the chairman's company. You said, well, you know that Chairman Ding doesn't actually own it. And the responses were, right, he probably has some family members or somebody like that owning it, but it's Chairman Ding's company. He, he exercises control over that and through Yundong controls these tier one distributors. So how many of the formers were aware of Yundong? So if I recall, um, of, the, of the five with whom we spoke, I believe all five are aware of Yundong and mentioned it. 
And how many of those five felt like the chairman had control of you know? Again, from memory, so no, nobody disagreed that the chairman has control of Yundong. So yeah. it was four to five remembered, and this is in our report. So yeah. if anybody has questions, they should look at the report for this detail. But nobody disagreed of those four to five who stated that the chairman controls, uh, or Yundong is what controls the tier one distributors. They all stated or agreed that Chairman Ding controls Yundong. That's interesting. You know, we they look for a pattern in a lot of these, you know, China-based material misrepresentations or frauds, as you call it in this case. And here, there, there seems to be something you've done in the past, a, a, a short call you did called NQ. And what it reminds me of in NQ is Ida Tong. And at one point, you made the point that Ida Tong is NQ. Now, NQ and, and uh, Anta couldn't be farther from the same company, but Ida Tong was NQ, and it sounds like Yun Dong is Anta. Right. So, <laughs> you're, by bringing up NQ, you're going to force me to say nice things about Anta. Okay. I mean, yeah, you know, NQ is so such a horrible, miserable little fraud. I mean, it, there was no real business. So, yeah. Um, Yi Da Tong was this purported third-party independent customer, but it was really NQ. But what's, what's interesting about that comparison, though, and um, I mean, when we looked at Yi Da Tong, one of the things that we saw early on that made us realize, okay, this is, you know, this is not separate from NQ, was the overlapping IT infrastructure. Yeah. So the email addresses, the phone numbers. And... We have that, of course, in spades in this uh, for you know, for the tier one distributors here. But what's actually pretty funny is one of the tier one distributors that um, that uh, that Anta controls. It's called Guangzhou Zhongrei. And so when we went to the Wayback Machine uh, to go to Guangzhou Zhongrei's website, it, it's a really strange website. It it looks like it's a corporate intranet portal, and so. It has what is a link for uh, what looks like a link for um, Anta, and there's also a ydmail.cn uh, or .com link, which goes to a webmail portal, and it looks like that's actually for Yundong's um, in, you know, a login for Yundong's email system. So just to make sure I'm understand or I'm explaining this correctly. You have this purportedly independent distributor. Yeah. You go to its website. There isn't really much there except what appears to be corporate intranet for Anta. And one of the things that we also got um, from the Wayback Machine, there was a link that stopped working. So I wonder if maybe somebody was tipped off that by the downloads. But to a spreadsheet of over 480 Anta email addresses. But what you see in the spreadsheet, in addition to, and this, again, is coming from the distributor, purportedly independent, what you see in addition to some departments like Southern District of China, customer service, you, you see individuals who we know are with Anta, but you also see individuals who are with these, with some of these distributors, like another distributor called Guangzhou Anda. So Guangzhou Anda was it's one of the biggest distributors we think it's the biggest in guangdong province and so you see all of these co-mingled and everybody has an anta.cn email address so this is just another similar to Ida tong with the overlapping right. it infrastructure this is just another tell that there's no separation here this is really all blending well and that that's what struck me in the report really I, you know they're a, I agree. So with that's you. why you brought it up. It, it is why okay. I brought it up. It's it's certainly like I said. It can't be further from NQ in in size and and realness and, and, and yeah, and the, that it's it's a vast company that actually is a large sportswear distributor. But the fact that you're controlling this company, I mean, you're saying if I take what you're saying at face value, that they're controlling the finance department, they're controlling the human resource department to the point to where they're paying them. They're paying them. You're saying. 
Right. right. And it's and it's important also when you think about why would you control the human resource department? Yeah. And you why? need to ensure loyalists. Yeah. Right. So you want to make sure you control the hiring um, and who's working there. And, and obviously, and, discipline. Why, and obviously, why would you control the finance department? Well, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. So, yeah. And it, it just goes back to the point is Yundong Anta. Yeah. Well, it, yes, it's Chairman Ding slash Anta. Right. And when you go back to, like, how much the, the due diligence you do is crazy. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at this, and it's, it's obviously months and months and months of yes. work, right? So others have, have done what they've done, and maybe they spent months. You obviously spent months and a lot of money, and, and that shows through. And then you get to a part of your report where it's just the unforced errors that companies make where you can go to a way back machine and see the kind of cooperation where you're sharing an email server and and you prove at least anecdotally through this through this system and this way back machine that there is that kind of cooperation and 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 that overlap mm -hmm. and i notice something in your report where you're saying look i urge regulators to get to these servers and get to these emails quickly and yeah quickly is the key yeah yeah quickly is the key and get this information so that you can verify what you had found in the wayback machine what i also found interesting about that is you know i think i know the answer to this question but you're urging regulators to do this i guess i guess you've just given up on asking auditors to do anything <laughs> <laughs> good one yeah <laughs> yes okay all right. Well, I had to ask, right? I mean, auditors... Well, every, everybody always does. I mean, right. you know, yeah. normally, yeah, normally you're interviewed by somebody who's a journalist or I'm interviewed by somebody who's a journalist and, yeah, you frequently get the question. And, right. and I'm not allowed the liberty of, of laughing at it in those situations. Right. But, you know, you, you're obviously in on the joke, so... Yeah, I, you know, you, you, you can always hope. You know, tomorrow's, you know, every day is a chance to get it right and tomorrow's another day. I hope we get it right, but... Um, I'm Don't not, bet on it. I'm not sure tomorrow we're going to get it right with the auditors. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting case. Uh, it's it's a lot of work that's been put into it. I think there's more to come. I think that this this in and of itself uh, has been both interesting and informative. Uh, and I think for part one of Anta, this is this has been great. Turds in the punch bowl. <laughs>